Well, uh, I think that y you must remember that, that our industrial base, uh, our existing industrial base, or what's left of it, or, or, or what there once was, was developed on the back of a strong mining and agricultural sector, and it was also protected. We had labor policies of the past that basically used the homeland to subsidize labor um, so that manufacturing and mining could grow, that mining more so than manufacturing, but it essentially benef benefited manufacturing as well. And then the other uh, industrial policy trick was cheap uh, electricity. Um, uh, allied to that, um, with those two things disappearing, and rightly so in one respect at least, um, we had uh, liberalized very quickly in the 90s with regards to trade. Now, everybody accepts that we need to liberalize more, and over time, trade will become freer, and it must become freer. But if you d outpace yourself uh, in terms of your other areas of development, which is what happened to us, and at the same time, we also uh, uh, corporatized our uh, 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 state-owned entities, which meant that a lot of industrial activity and demand for it disappeared there. Uh, we also um, stopped concentrating on uh, buying locally made <coughs> products. Um, those kind of things all contributed to us, uh, uh, our eye disappearing off the ball, uh, and so uh, the base for manufacturing uh, basically, uh, dis well, the demand for disappeared. Then, of course, we had the rise of China. Okay, uh, that, wrap it up. Uh, that had, uh, that had uh, impact as well, and all of these things cumulatively put us where we are today. In addition to what Conrad has mentioned, we have realized that our market is so small. So it becomes uh, imperative that we venture into other markets, which means the global uh, markets. And uh, by doing so, we need to, to, to broaden our export market. But our challenge, as you have mentioned, is that uh, our products are not so competitive in the relative terms. And uh, one of the re some of the reasons, there's a package of reasons why some of them Conrad has mentioned. Uh, in a nutshell, from, from my point of view, is that our factors of production are quite costly in relative terms. Uh, our, our skills base, high tech skills base is very thin, and all those uh, together, they make us to be uncompetitive. And uh, we have realized that most products in the global trade or in the, in the global, yes, in the global markets are products arising from advanced manufacturing. And uh, we must agree we are not yet there. We are moving there, but we are not yet there. And that's why we get outcompeted. You've got an immediate situation to deal with. Uh, and so although we might be aiming towards um, structural changes going forward, at the moment we've got a very real problem of costs in the domestic economy and, um, and a demand for goods that must be advanced. That demand must be advanced by growing the local market and um, by opening up uh, existing markets more and new markets for our products to go to. So that means at a foreign policy level, at a trade policy level, we need to work much harder at growing the local market. We need to work much harder and we need concerted action on things like administered prices immediately. If you have that, I think you can uh, inch up manufacturing growth by quite a couple of percentage points in a very short space of time. We can position ourselves with the future of manufacturing. We are in Africa, we are positioned so well for this uptake of manufacturing. That means we could really sell out of South Africa. We cannot be oblivious to the fact that South Africa in its population is small comparatively. And if we want to be a country of a net exporter, then we have to tap into this huge market called Africa. And then we need to, in South Africa, be the next China, what this world has experienced in the past few years. But that can only be done with building up skills, bringing labor, bringing government, and bringing industry together.